This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, wicked campers face public outrage over their signage and offensive message content. Aviation in Queenstown will celebrate 70 years in the air with some very special guests flying in. And Invercargill's YMCA has a program of very special interest to one in four of you. And a very good evening with the South today. I'm Craig Storey. It's Pi Day. A new social media campaign has begun to get rid of tourist vans painted with what are considered to be very offensive messages. Photos of wicked campers' vans on the streets of Dunedin and Wanaka have reappeared on social media in recent weeks, prompting renewed calls from the community for a blanket ban. The Dunedin residents have taken to social media to express renewed concerns about sightings of wicked campers. Three of the most offensive designs were banned by the Chief Censor in 2016. However, campers depicting semi-clad women in sexual poses have been caught on camera in the last few weeks. Initially, I was surprised to see the ban. I've seen one other and that was in Wanaka and the post that was on that van too was just on the edge of being offensive. If you were a grown up, you understood it. If you were a child, you might not understand it. This one, um, the back was probably a little un PC, but I didn't find it offensive. The side, though, was obvious. It was a naked woman with her legs spread and, you know, mobile pussy written on the side. You can't misinterpret that. The comments follow the appearance of international pornography expert Marie Crabb at Otago Boys High last week. Crabb is studying the influence pornography has on young people. She says pornography is becoming increasingly aggressive, degrading, and violent. Hill says it is not an exaggeration to equate wicked campers with porn. The only time nudity paraded around the streets isn't restricted is on these vans. You wouldn't be allowed, to, Penthouse wouldn't be allowed to put a big billboard up along the one-way system with a half-naked female on it advertising their magazine. Like that would be a big no because it's R18. So what's the difference to that than them being allowed to parade around in these vans with a naked woman on the side of their van, whether it's a painted woman or not. But if we don't deal with the base level stuff and we, like you said, and this is a normal, this, and this is New Zealand normal, uh -huh. then what the heck are we going to do when it comes to all the, the aggression, the domestic violence and all the rest of it if pornography is normal? The women say the campers are also offensive to those with learning disabilities. Wicked campers were unavailable for comment at the time of publication. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. Otago Regional Council Councillor Maggie Lawton has lost her brief battle with cancer and passed away on Sunday. Otago Regional Council Chairman Stephen Woodhead expressed sorrow in the news of her passing. Maggie Lawton won the Dunstan constituency in last year's local body elections. Stephen Woodhead says she was passionate about environmental issues, the region that she served, and particularly water quality. She says of all of the team at the ORC mourn Peggy's untimely passing and are offering condolences to her friends and family. A 1943 de Havilland DH-89 Bonhomie biplane, also known as Tuya, will star at an upcoming reunion in Queenstown early next month. The reunion of former staff and family members from the original post-war airlines will celebrate the history of aviation in Queenstown. Mina Amso takes to the skies. It's not every day that passengers get to experience travelling in a 1943 de Havilland Dominie plane a.k.a. Tui, but they might this April. Well, the grand old lady of the Queenstown aviation history will return here to the skies in April for a 70-year uh, Pioneer Airline reunion. Queenstown pilot Hank Sproul was 10 years old when the Dominies were first flown in Queenstown Airport. 
He is now one of the longest-serving members of the Queenstown Airport's general aviation community. I think the reunion is going to be great to get um, people together, all the old people that flew here in, in the pioneering days. The eight-seater aircraft was built in the early 40s and used for scenic, scheduled and charter work from Queenstown Airport. And there's a saying in aviation, if it looks good, it is good, and they are good. So that is um, probably the special part of the Domino, you know. It's like, it's, it's very sleek, elliptical wings, very streamlined, and for, probably for its time, way ahead of, of uh, the design, way ahead of what, um, what it was designed for. Richard Waugh, an aviation historian, remembers his father, Brian Waugh, flying in a Domini in Queenstown. Flying Dominies and Cessnas, and then uh, served on the, the west coast in South Westland, which was related to the Queenstown airline. Uh, the Queenstown Airport Corporation has helped pay for the 1943 de Havilland aircraft come to Queenstown. It's really celebrating the history of this airport uh, and, and its roots as a general aviation uh, airport and aerodrome. Now fully restored for commercial use, the plane will be available during the reunion for those who fancy a ride. Mina and so the South Today. How lovely my parents once flew on that plane. Wanaka developer Alan Dippy's plans for a house overlooking Lake Wanaka are a step closer to reality with a council planner recommending resource consent be granted. Mr Dippy's company, Beach Cottage Trustees Limited, has applied for resource consent to build a 478 square metre, two-level house and a swimming pool. The site overlooks Lake Wanaka and Ruby Island and is located in an area of outstanding natural landscape. A hearing on the resource consent application will be held at the Edgewater Resort in Wanaka tomorrow. With one in four New Zealanders being diabetic or having pre-diabetes, the YMCA is rolling out a program to help people prevent and manage the disease. And registration is now open for the Invercargill Group. One in three Kiwis are obese, and with that statistic comes a raft of health problems. A partnership of companies and organisations is looking to tackle the diabetes epidemic. Dozens of people came to the YMCA last night to see the launch of Jumpstart. So Jumpstart is a 10-week program for people with diabetes. Um, we do see a lot of people with pre-diabetes come through and they believe um, that, they, that they can change some of their diet, their lifestyle and become more active and really turn that diagnosis around. So it's a support program, it's unique and we collaborate with other services in the community to, to make it worthwhile. One of the groups in collaboration with the YMCA is Pharmacodiabetes. Product manager Sandeep Sharma says there was a need for something like this. It started initially with the, the, the casual conversation between CEO of Pharmaco and CEO of YMCA over a cup of coffee, and where they thought that we, they need to they need to do something to actually you know halt the progression of this this diabetes uh, in in some way or form, and from there the whole idea of Jumpstart developed. A quarter of New Zealanders are diabetic or have pre-diabetes. YMCA Jumpstart lead Peter McMillan says the program caters to the group's needs. They can bring in dietitians, health psychologists, podiatrists, and the list goes on. We are very excited about this program coming to Invercargill because there's such a neat collaboration between the services already. Um, so even within five weeks of the program being up and running, we're seeing the locals are, are, are really embracing the change. Um, we've got a group of 12 really committed um, locals who are, are going to give it a crack. The program started in Auckland and Hamilton two years ago. And so far, 600 people around the country have graduated it. I'm Ruby Spink for The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, NZTA and the Clutha District Council have some good news to share. A road closure and due to a slip, and we're mad and we're not going to take it anymore. Protests in the street around the country as corporations steal and pollute New Zealand's water. Active Furnishes Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishes Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Here is this week's Mole Map UV report. Did you know, in recent years, the number of New Zealanders dying from melanoma has been as high as the road toll? If you've ever been on a sunbed, or been badly sunburnt, 
What are the chances you could have melanoma? Remove the doubt. Get a mole map. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473-8252. Please adopt a pet now. They will love you forever. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoua Valley Road, visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488 566. The University of Otago. Usually the atmosphere is charged with the energy of student life. But this week is the week before exams. Hey, Tane. Not now, man. I'm panicking. Come on, mate. I know just what you need. In here? No, no. Is this it? No. This is the place to ease your stress. Hey, Tane. Fancy a little cuddle? Aero International knows what the essential ingredient is for accomplishing great projects, working with great people. 30 years on and 3,000 projects later, with 10 offices and 400 staff nationwide, a company who values partnerships with their clients and carries a strong reputation for passion, integrity and the love of a challenge. Excelling in the construction industry and helping to create, with our partners, more iconic New Zealand buildings. They say the grass is always greener, but not if you have Ready Lawn. Call Ready Lawn today and make them green with envy. And thank you for staying with the South today. Work to strengthen the Hina Hina Bridge over the tidal Catlins Lake will go ahead after the project budget of $1.3 million was approved by the NZTA, the New Zealand Transport Agency. The Clutha District Council says the bridge has deteriorated over several years and was under severe weight restrictions for safety reasons. The NZTA will contribute 59% of the cost to strengthen the bridge, while the council will pony up for the remaining 41%. The strengthening will allow vehicles as heavy as 44 tonnes to cross the bridge. Bridge closures will be expected once work commences, of course, but it was necessary to bring the bridge up to a functioning standard. Tenders for the project close on March the 27th. A slip has closed Highcliff Road just north of Sandy Mount Road in Dunedin. The road is closed while some initial work is done and the Dunedin City Council hopes to open up to single lane traffic tomorrow. A detour is available down Sandy Mount Road via Hooper's Inlet Road and Allen's Beach Road to Portobello. The DCC has engaged a geotechnical firm to investigate the slip and to advise on repairs. Around the country today, protests were held against the pollution and exploitation of New Zealand's fresh water. 
And in Invercargill, about 30 peaceful protesters gathered outside Environment Southland. Two microphones were handed around and everyone who wanted to speak was given an opportunity. Environment Southland councillors listened to concerns about swimmability. They expressed an interest in addressing problems raised at the rally. The protest was held alongside 20 other Save Our Water events nationwide. And today a petition with 15,000 signatures was delivered to Parliament calling for a moratorium on freshwater exports. After the break on the south today, a man washes his car in Otago Harbour, man damp, car wet. Alex Clarsen schools Roselle Le Bone in the difficult art of table tennis. And we look forward, we look ahead to your weather for Pi Day and other days recurring. For over 35 years, Roslyn Mowers and Heating have been selling and servicing outdoor power equipment and are well established in home heating, installing wood fires. Call in and meet the friendly team. Roslyn Mowers and Heating, 150 Kaikarai Valley Road. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second hand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. Ecro Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs, visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 11 7766. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473 8252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Travelling this weekend? Think slow. We're a 25 Moro place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass produced sort of cheap things, we're taking our time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. finance and get on the road. Talk to MTF today. The University of Otago, New Zealand's only true collegiate university. For first year students, the history, the expectations of excellence are... Unfamiliar. G'day, I'm next door. Hi, next door. I'm Samantha Pascoe. No, you're not. I'm Josh Clyde Science. And you are? Sam Hastings. Lauren Arts. Tang. Auckland Commerce. Osaka. Greece. Classics. <laughs> ah. History. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Gillians and Silverhorn bring you Rub of the Green, lawn bowls from around the south, Saturday night at 7. 
replaying on Sunday at 1pm and Tuesday at 3.30. Thank you for staying with the South today on Pi Day, 3.14 recurring. A driver escaped unhurt after his car went off the road into Otago Harbour in Dunedin today. An emergency service spokesperson says the car left Harrington Point Road near Tamatia Road in Otakau and went into the water just before 4.30 yesterday afternoon. What a great picture that is. This was one male driver in the car who was uninjured and he swam to shore. A St John's spokesman says no one was injured and the Otago Regional Helicopter Rescue Chopper was stood down. A Dunedin school pupil is one of only 16 international athletes to make it to the Oceana Under-12 World Table Tennis Champs in April. Alex Clarkson caught up with reporter Roselle LeBone on what makes his table tennis game tick. A simple jelly bean could get this young athlete across the line in two weeks' time. Usually I have a jelly bean before a game because that like, uh, gets you woken up usually before the game. Alex Clarkson is heading across the ditch to Tweed Heads, Australia, to compete at the 2017 ITTF Oceania Hopes Week and Challenge. He and coach Ben Duffy practice many hours a day to perfect Alex's game. He says the key to a great match is all in the serve. Cock your wrist up like this and you go like that and you get heaps and heaps of side spin so it just curves around kind of like that. Like round the net's my favourite shot to play whereas instead of going over it, it goes like round it. Um, I think young people in particular have a tendency to try and finish the rally off a bit soon. So we're just trying to keep the ball in play and uh, put the pressure on the opponent to make the mistakes rather than him and have good strategy when he plays. So Alex talked earlier about working out what the opponent can and can't do, that's really important. It's not just the trip Alex has to be prepared for, but he says the game itself will get faster in Australia's hot conditions. While he's attending Bayfield High next year, Alex will be juggling college with training hard to make it into the cadets under 15 New Zealand squad. Roselle Bone, The South Today. Good luck, young man. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Photos of wicked campers on the streets of Dunedin and Wanaka have reappeared on social media in recent weeks, prompting renewed calls from the community for a blanket ban of the damned things. Uh, DH89 Dominie Biplane is the star attraction at an upcoming reunion in Queenstown. And in Invercargill's YMCA is rolling out a program to help people prevent and manage diabetes with one in four New Zealanders affected. And with that, it's time now to have a look at tomorrow's ODT with Phil. How are you, dear man? Yes, good, good. Um, I'm no motorhead at all, not really particularly interested in cars, but today I was a little jealous of a reporter and think it would be nice to be a reporter again. Uh, a reporter had a ride in Dean Hall, you know, he's the gaming man, um, his brand new uh, Tesla, Ooh. 262,000 worth, Ooh. and uh, in its uh, ludicrous setting. It uh, goes from 0 to 100k in 2.3 seconds. Say so that again. 2.3 seconds. So they wow. Just, like, <laughs> That's ridiculous. It is ludicrous. It is it, it's an amazing feeling doing that. Fabulous. So um, John Lewis has hit a ride and uh, talks about some of the future and uh, what the future holds for us. Oh, it's, we, it's an electric it's future. An electric no future. Apparently electric. it can get to Christchurch and back in one charge. So that uh, solves the issue that puts many people still off electric cars. Wow. Uh, pop over to the feature pages. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us, even not interested in the fashion, remember the old Benson and Hedges Fashion Award, oh, Design yes, Awards. Yes, of course. Uh, an exhibition soon at the Art Gallery. We'll um, look at uh, some of that over the years, 64 to uh, about 98 it ran. Mm -hmm. It was a big thing on TV. Yeah, so it was. People can look at that. Feed the fresh pages, also lots of recipes as usual, oysters, including oyster recipes. Oh, goodness. So it just, just good on tea time. Oh, I'm salivating now, Phil. Thanks yeah. for that. Maggie Lawton, the mm -hmm. sad story, de, de, but a uh, hi, highly respected regional councillor who died yesterday. Lots of tributes to the work she was doing and to what she's a huge loss to the Wanaka community. Indeed. Um, Tony Brown, the Highlanders, apparently he's picked up an injury just to go. Oh, great. So, so in social sport, so read about that. And on the opinion page is a story that uh, 
relates to Queenstown and Auckland in particular, what to do about the huge number of tourists, and, and it is a big challenge, mm -hmm. and lots of debate about that issue these days. Everyone's got a, an opinion on it, and they're all valid. Indeed. Phil Somerville from the ODT, thank you so thank very you. much, sir. All right, stand by you, grab a brolly, time for the weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Sportsfell. Southern view, taken of yarn bombing in the octagon today, a very colourful spectacle. Off to Wakatipu in Queenstown, how pretty is that? And that is the water tower in Invercargill, a beautiful piece of landscape. To the situation now, of course, it's damp, overcast and cool. Southerly's dying out tomorrow. Better weather approaches, so a few fine sunny days are in your future. To the outlook across the deep south at Balclutha, light winds, fine and 16, and pretty much the same across the board, across through Lumsden Gore and the Catlins. To the central, into tourist country, Alexandra, light westerlies, fine and 19. The same for Queenstown, uh, light westerlies for Taunau, and also for Wanaka, it's the same thing. There you go, 15 to 19. And to the northern outlook, off to Whitestone Country, light nor'easters, fine and 18 for Oamaru. Uh, light winds, fine for Omarama, dark skies though. Timaru, light nor'easters, fine and 18. And light winds for the lovely township of Twizel and 18. Cool, damp and fine and 4 degrees for Dunedin tonight. Wednesday, mostly sunny but cool, early autumnal conditions prevailing, light nor'easters, cold night though, 5 and 15, and looking for Thursday, a better mild day, high cloud, sunny conditions, uh, light nor'easters though, 9 and 18 for Dunedin's Thursday. Invercargill tonight, crisp, fine, clear, cold, maybe a little bit of a frost, but look at that, that's two. Wednesday, milder weather, sunny periods, uh, 5 and 15, moderate westerlies for you. Thursday, freshening nor'westers, cloudy again, showers late in the day, 9 and 17. Not bad in the beautiful town of Invercargill. On behalf of the very hard-working team for the South Today and the ODT, it's been my pleasure. I'm Craig Storey. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.